insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 20, Father's Day Q&A. I am your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, my dad, Joseph Whalen. Hello, Maddie. Hi. Oh. That's okay. You're fine. Okay. So, we're in a bit of a different situation, aren't we? We are. Uh, you're, we've kind of switched roles. You're running the board today, so this is kind of a learning experience for you. Yeah. So, um, since it's Father's Day, um, we're doing a small special. I'm going to be asking you some questions, and you're going to give me your answers. Yes, I am. So, I've looked on a couple different websites and found um, a bunch of different questions related f- towards fathers like you and i also added in some questions that i think should also be in this podcast sounds good so are you ready let's do it so my first question for you is has something ever happened at a wedding that you would never forget well the Probably the biggest thing that sticks out to me at weddings was at my wedding to my first wife where the limo was supposed to pick the girls up and then the limo was supposed to come pick the guys up. Well, the limo never showed up. We were at my mom's house. The limo never showed up and we're looking at the clock, looking at the clock, doesn't get there. You know, we're frantically calling around and you kind of have to remember this was... I don't know, 15 years ago where cell phones weren't as prevalent as they were today. Okay. Uh, so it was hard to get a hold of the people that you had to call. And we eventually just made the decision to get in a car and go. And I wound up having to get into a old beat up red pickup truck and go to my wedding with uh, my brothers in my red pickup truck. Wow, that doesn't actually sound that fun. No, it, it was... I guess from the outside observer, kind of hilarious. Okay, so next question is, think of some relatives that have passed away in the last few years, and what would they be doing if they were with you? Um, the one that comes to mind is probably my dad. Okay. Uh, he loved the summer, which clearly I don't. Yeah, clearly. Uh, He loved to work out in his yard, gardening and stuff like that, and he loved to just go sit in the shade and and have a beer. And uh, even though I don't drink, I imagine I'd probably be sitting on the deck with him under the big umbrella having a beer at some point on the weekend. Mm. All right, so my next question is, what do you remember about the houses you lived in as a kid, and which one did you like best? Well, I lived in two as a kid. One, we moved out of when I was like two, so I don't really remember that. Um, The only thing I do remember of that was when we were in the process of moving and uh, was in the same neighborhood and we walked from one house to the other. I remember walking up the sidewalk with my mom and tripping and falling and scraping my hand. So it's not a very, you know... Uh, pleasant memory that I have of that house. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the second house that I really grew up in. And the biggest thing that I remember about that was it was a small three bedroom house that had um, seven of us in there. It was my mom and dad, my three brothers and I, and my grandmother. So it was very cramped, but mm-hmm. very cozy. Definitely sounds a bit cramped. Yep. 
All right, so my next question is, what did you have as a child that kids today don't have? Um, well, there was a lot. Um, not that I had a lot, but there was a lot that we had back then that we don't have today. Okay. Uh, the biggest one that I could think of is probably my typewriter. Uh, okay. I used to take this thing everywhere with me. And it wasn't like a laptop computer now. This was like 30 pounds, all metal, in a case. It was like carrying a suitcase around. Wow. Um, and it was a manual typewriter. So if you wanted to type, you know, you practically had to lean on the keys to get anything out of it. Uh, there was no way to do any kind of corrections or anything. So if you made a mistake, uh, you had to go in there with a special eraser and hopefully not tear through the paper when you erased it. Oh, God. Um, but typewriters, I think, are largely a thing of the past these days. Yeah, it doesn't seem too pleasant. No. Alrighty, so my next question is, what family member has been your biggest... Has, uh, greatest coach in life how have they coached you and what made them good at it this one's kind of easy this one would would be my mom um my mom was not well educated and she didn't have a fancy job or anything um but she had a lot of worldly experience and she had um wisdom beyond her years i like to say okay um, she always had a way of making the worst situation seem manageable. She didn't necessarily solve the problem, but when you felt overwhelmed, um, and you didn't know which direction to go or if you'd be able to do something, she had this way of just listening. She was the best listener. And, uh, even if she couldn't give you a solution to it, her ability to listen made you feel like that burden wasn't entirely yours. And, and when you walked away from that conversation, you felt unburdened enough to actually tackle whatever it was. And it was a real talent she had for that. And that seems, she definitely seems like a really nice mom. Absolutely. Next question. When you were a teenager, which family member did you go to for advice? And looking back, was it good advice? Uh, the only family member I went to for advice other than my mom was probably my brother, Ken. Okay. Um, he and I were the closest in age. He, there was only a four year, uh, difference there. Uh, we never really got along all that well, but, um, if I went to him for advice, he would, he would give me honest advice and he never had a problem expressing his opinions. Ah. Uh, so... Like I said before, was it good advice? Um, usually it was. Um, I think a lot of times the advice that he gave, he gave honestly from the heart, but it was very specific to his needs and his abilities. Uh, he never really tried to understand my perspective. And he and I were two very different people. So while his advice on most things was good, some of the advice itself wasn't necessarily applicable to me because uh, we were just too different. Mm. Alrighty. So next question. Tell me a story about a family reunion or a family party that you remember attending as a child. Um, the one that probably sticks out was sort of a recurring visit we would get from my cousin Marie okay. and her husband Artie. Uh, they would sort of pop in out of the blue unannounced when they were in the neighborhood because they lived in, you know, a couple hours away at the time. And when they would stop in, it was like, you know, the family would sort of pick up where things were as if no time had passed. Oh. And uh, one of the things they always did was cook. Well, you know, the, the, big, the big family thing in my family, the big social thing in my family was food and cooking. Wow. Um, as demonstrated by my size, I think. But um, they would cook blinis. And blinis are sort of a potato pancake that's fried in, in oil. And they, they were very good. They tasted very good. But more importantly, they made the house smell very good. 
Sounds like you probably enjoyed their visits. I do. And, and in, you know, it's funny around the Jewish holidays when mommy makes um, potato pancakes here, it's a very similar type of uh, smell and taste that fills the house. So it makes me kind of nostalgic. What does that mean? That means uh, it makes me remember back and, and takes me back to when I was a kid. Ah. So my next question is, if you could know anything about your family history or about a relative who has passed away, what would you want to know? Well, my dad was married to someone before he married my mom. Okay. And uh, that marriage uh, yielded a child, a son. And my mom talked about him occasionally. My dad never talked about him. And, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that... Um, when the marriage ended, um, his ex-wife took her, their son and, and moved away, and he lost both a wife and a son from it. Uh, so he was very uh, scarred from that, so he never wanted to talk about it. But my mom had told me that his name was Johnny, and you know what I'd like to do is know more about him and who he was and what happened to him, and even you know if he's still alive, meet him. Um, but I don't know if that's even, you know, remotely possible at this point. So you want to know more about Johnny? I would, yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to know more about him. Indeed. My next question is, what is the most embarrassing thing your mother or father ever did to you? Um, so this goes to my first Holy Communion. Okay. And... We didn't have a lot of money. We never had a lot of money. So they couldn't afford to buy me, you know, a new suit or clothes for the event. Mm -hmm. So I wound up wearing a hand-me-down set of clothes that was really this putrid, ugly, old brown suit that my brother wore. Um, and it was probably 10 years out of style when he wore it and 10 years more out of style when I wore it. I don't know whenever that was ever in style. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's one of those things where when you wear clothes like that, kids kind of know why you're wearing it. And kids can be cruel and they will make fun of you for it. Um, so that was kind of a, a painful period that I got through. But it's one of those things. There was more important things to spend money on, like food to put on the table, mm -hmm. than nice clothes. So. Yeah. My next question is, what are your best memories of holidays or family gatherings as a child? Well, uh, Christmas was probably the best. And it was the best because, as I said, we didn't have a lot of money. So the only time we ever really got any kind of presents was for Christmas. Uh, you'd get something small on your birthday, but since my birthday was so close to Christmas... There wasn't a lot of money left over for my birthday, so I kind of got left out on my birthday. Mm. Um, but the more important thing than the presents was that most of the year, my father was a very distant and cold individual. He wasn't very affectionate, didn't spend a lot of time with us, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that he worked third shift, so we didn't get to see him that often, and you know, there's a number of factors, but... Uh, around Christmas time, his affection came out and you got to see it. So he was a very different person around Christmas and he went out of his way to try to make Christmas special for us. So that was always something that I appreciated. I definitely think that was a special thing that he did. Mm -hmm. Even though he didn't really show much affection to you guys the rest of the year. Yeah, that was tough, but you know, you get by, right? Yep. My next question is, did your parents ever lose their jobs, and what happened? Well, my mom didn't work, at least not when I was a kid. Um, she had stopped working when she had my two brothers, and she was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was a, a laborer, a grocer at, at AMP when they were around. And when he was coming up on I don't know, 25, 30 years there, and he was coming up on retirement... Uh, they kind of forced him out earlier than he was planning on being forced out. Uh, 
That doesn't exactly sound good. Well, he like he'd expected to work another two years and then retire, and he kind of, you know, that's what he was planning for. And when he hit that retirement age, which wasn't mandatory retirement for them, but when he hit that retirement age, they made him retire at that point in time, and they compensated him. You know, they gave him his pension and all that stuff. Um, but he had planned on working another two years, so he didn't have another job lined up. He didn't have any other income lined up and the pension was only paying like 70% of what he was making. And we were struggling week to week just on what he was making for his full salary. So when he lost the job and realized he couldn't survive on what he was getting for his pension and he was too young to file for, um, social security, things got really tight and, it got kind of scary for a while. Like I didn't understand it at the time. Uh, I didn't really, I guess I was maybe 10 at the time. I didn't really fully appreciate the situation, but there was definitely a tension and a fear that my parents had that, that drove a lot of anxiety at the time, which I didn't really understand until later on in life. Mm, okay. That definitely doesn't sound like the ideal habitat for a 10 year old. No, no, not at all. All righty. My next question is, where's the best thing that your parents ever cooked? Well, my dad didn't cook, so we can leave that out of the equation. Okay. My mom, pretty much anything she cooked um, was good. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and I say that now probably because I miss her cooking, uh, and that's not to take anything away from mommy. Mommy's a fantastic cook. Yep, um, she is. But, you know, I'm sure at the time I wasn't crazy about everything that my mom made. Um, I especially loved the way that she made her fried chicken, mm-hmm. uh, her lasagna, her vegetable soup. Uh, she did homemade mac and cheese, which was awesome. Mm. Um, and she made her personal meat lumps, which are little meat loaves that she made. Uh, but even like her spaghetti meatballs, she hand rolled her own meatballs with her own recipe. Uh, and that was the thing with everything that my mom made, it was all made from scratch. She didn't cook anything out of a box. Um, being a stay at home mom, she had a surplus of time to make food. So most of her meal preparation was like an hour or more. And she worked her butt off to, to make food and make the food that good. Um, you know, mommy works full time, still manages to get a meal on the table every night that's excellent uh she really is the best 15 minute cook that i've ever seen and you know hands down i don't think anyone can beat her yeah i will well the thing is i actually want to try um making dinner for you guys when i get into the middle school because i'm gonna probably um get home earlier than you guys and i want to try and help out so mommy doesn't have to go through all the stress of cooking after Probably a stressful day at work. Well, that would be nice. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Yeah, once I learn to cook. But before we leave this topic here, the one thing I do have to point out that we've managed to carry over from my mom's cooking is her cheesecake. Oh, yes, we do. Her cheesecake was to die for. And you and I, around the holidays, we generally make a couple of cheesecakes using her recipe, and I think we get it spot on. Yeah, I think we do, too. So that's a little piece of my mom that carries on in, in the two of us, which is nice. Yeah, maybe we can make another recipe of hers. Um, We can certainly try. I'd love to make her vegetable soup. Mm. All right. Next question is, how did your parents change after they retired? Well, as I said, my mom didn't work, so she didn't retire. Um, And my dad didn't really get a chance to retire when they forced him to retire from AMP. He wound up, uh, he was out of work for a little while. wasn't long. He did a couple of different jobs. He tended bar and did things. Eventually he wound up working for a bank as an overnight security guard, uh, actually as a, as a driver for an armored car for the bank and then eventually moved inside. <clears throat> but, um, he did that right up until after he had gotten his cancer diagnosis and he physically couldn't work anymore and he wound up going out on disability. So he never had a chance to retire, but 
I guess when he was out on disability, that's the closest thing <coughs> to a retirement that he had. And uh, he changed. Um, I don't know if it was more being out of work or or the cancer diagnosis itself, because when he was diagnosed, he kind of knew, we kind of knew he wasn't going to survive it because it was so far along. So he changed and became more human. You know, he was more approachable, more appreciative of the people around him, where prior to that, he had kind of taken that for granted. Mm. So. Well, I guess the change is positive in some ways. It was. It was indeed. Alrighty. My next question is, how are you most different from your parents, and how are you the same? Well, let's take my dad first. I like to think I'm as different as I possibly can be from my dad. Not that I didn't love my dad, but my dad wasn't the nicest person in the world. Mm -hmm. um, he had a drinking problem, which don't. I don't because I don't drink. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank him for that, to be honest with you, because... I don't drink because he had a drinking problem. Ah. Uh. Just like I don't smoke because my parents both smoked. Ah. Uh. Um, and, and they turned me off from that. Um, I don't believe in physical punishment of my children. Now, you can attest to that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think physical punishment is just the absolute wrong way, the most wrong way you can actually use it. Yes, the child probably won't do it again, but they'll probably be... They'll probably be afraid of you every single time they make a little mistake. If you hurt them every time they make the littlest mistake, they'll end up being afraid of you. And I don't think that's right for a parent. Exactly. And that's the thing. I, I never wanted my kids to fear me. Um, I think you get far more effectiveness in parenting if your kids respect you rather than fear you. Yeah. Uh, that's why if, if you do something wrong or if there's an issue, we talk about it. And we discuss why it's wrong. We discuss what lessons we learned from it and how we're not going to do it again in the future. Yeah, and you've done that with me. And look at me now. And I'm. You're running a podcast. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> oh, my God, Daddy. Um, so, you know, some of the bad traits I get from my dad is I get his, his temper. Um, unfortunately, you know, even you can attest to the fact that I have a bit of a temper. But... Over the years, I've I've learned to focus that on inanimate objects rather than people. So I may go like I did last week, yelling at a at a network router downstairs when it wasn't working right, but I never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom, you know, I wish I was more like my mom. I wish I was, you know, more patient, more caring, more uh, selfless than her. Uh, my mom was an excellent role model, but that's not to say that she didn't have negative qualities either. My mom could be petty at times. Yeah, and like you said, both your parents actually smoked, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a habit. That's not a negative trait, I don't think. But, yeah. you know, like my mom could be petty sometimes. She could have arguments. She could be very sensitive at times. And to a certain extent, I can be some of those things too, but I think my sensitivity level has been dialed back significantly in my uh, advanced age, I should say. Hmm. And I just want to talk about how I also have your dad's temper. You do. Because I also do yelling at inanimate objects. <laughs> and I... Actually, one time when I really got mad, I actually threw a squishy at the wall really hard multiple times. Well, at least it was a squishy and, you know, not like a rock. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's the Irish side of the family coming out. Not to be... Stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. My next question is, if you could go back to one day in your childhood, what day would it be and why? Um... I'm going to extend childhood to be anything before, well, see, even that's not, not childhood. Uh, I'm going to twist the question a little bit and just say one day in the past. Okay. Because the one day that stands out to me that I'd really want to go back to is 
the day before my mom went in the hospital the last time. Um, because if I, if I was able to go back knowing now, knowing then what I know now, if I was able to go back in time, I'd be able to do things differently so that she would still be around. So what could you have done differently? Well, she uh, had a flu, I think it was, that she had. Okay. And she was sick in bed, and I stopped over after work to, to help her out. And she's, she had other medical issues, too, like she was diabetic and so forth. So I made sure she got all of her medications and that she was taken care of and had food and everything. And I had to leave. I had to go home because I had to work the next day. And she had asked me to stay. And I told her, I said, look, I, I can't stay. I, gotta, I have work in the morning and I don't have any clothes here or anything. I said, but I'll come back tomorrow and check on you. And uh, she had a medical issue that night and um the next morning she was found uh, unresponsive and just went downhill from there so i'm convinced that had i had uh abided by her wishes and i had stayed the night i would have been able to do something to make sure she was okay that actually kind of seems a little sad well thank you i appreciate that yeah i would definitely see why do you want to go back in time I think that can properly answer the question, even though it's not a day in your childhood. Right. Well, thank you. My next question is, what did your parents do with you that you loved? And what did they do that you didn't enjoy so much? Well, the thing that we would do as a family, our family vacation, we would go down to Wildwood, New Jersey, go down the shore, actually Wildwood Crest. Okay. And this was... um, Later, I guess in my teen years, we started doing this. And we there was this one hotel that we stayed at down there, uh, the Hawaii Kai, which isn't a hotel anymore. It's actually, I think, a condo uh, development now. Okay. And we'd go down there. We'd spend a week down there. We'd go swimming. We'd do the beach. Uh, there was a large hotel across the street called the Bow Harbor, which is still there. They had an, a huge arcade, and I'd spend time in the arcade we do the boardwalk um and like christmas this was one of those times where my dad tended to unwind a little bit and uh kind of showed his softer side so that was kind of something that was nice that sounds nice it was we really enjoyed it so Um, what did you not enjoy so much that your parents did what i did not enjoy was they both smoked uh, and they smoked like chimneys in the house, in the car, out in the yard, everywhere. They smoked everywhere. And uh, it drove me crazy. Later on in life, I was able to <clears throat> convince my mom to finally quit smoking. And what about your dad? Um, ironically enough, he quit smoking when his first grandchild was born so that he could be around longer for her. And yeah, and can you describe why he quit smoking and... The reason why he wanted to make sure to take care of her so much. Well, you know, he he understood that what he was doing wasn't healthy for him, and he his hope was that if he stopped smoking, he'd live longer and be able to spend more time with his granddaughter because he desperately wanted it. Well, he wanted a daughter in general, but after having four boys, I think he finally settled on having a granddaughter. So when his granddaughter was born. She was going to be, you know, what he devoted his life to at that point in time. So he quit smoking to try and live longer. So basically, he always wanted his own daughter or a granddaughter. That's correct. Um, and and like I was saying, the ultimate irony was the doctors think that the, the change to his metabolism when he just quit cold turkey is what actually triggered the cancer. So his uh, his desire to live longer wound up causing him to die sooner. Alrighty, so what was one thing that your mom or dad always used to tell you growing up that turned out to be true? My dad always, he was a practical man. Uh, Wasn't very, wasn't a wealth of wisdom. But the one thing he would always say is the world always needs ditch diggers. And can you elaborate on that? What he meant by that is 
if you don't want to succeed in life, if you don't want to go to college, if you don't want to be successful, if you don't want to work hard to get ahead in life, <clears throat> then you can always, you know, resort to doing manual labor. It's miserable work. It doesn't pay well. But hey, if you're not interested in getting ahead in the world, that's how you can always go. And and it's true. I mean, that's really what my dad was, you know, metaphorically was a ditch digger. You know, he never tried to get ahead in life. And I think especially looking at his his siblings because they were all college educated, they were all very successful, and I think he resented them for that to a certain degree and he regretted the fact that he never took the time to advance himself. Um, my mom, my mom would like, always like to say, always find time to forgive. We always, and that, that's so t typical of my mom. It really was. We always get mad at each other. There's no relationship, marriage, friendship, you know, work relationship, no matter what. There's no relationship where you don't get angry at the other person. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to find room in your heart to forgive. And if you can do that, then you can get past just about anything. Okay. <clears throat> so next question, I already kind of guessed what this would be. What is your favorite movie or book when you were my age? Uh, when I was your age, that would have been 80, you're what, 12? 12. That would have been 86. So that means all three Star Wars movies would have come out by then. So I think at the time, Return of the Jedi would have been my favorite movie. Okay. Just because it was so fresh. <laughs> fresh. Fresh. <laughs> yeah, but... In general, you love Star Wars. Yes, I do. Alrighty. The next one is, what is the hardest thing you went through as a child and how did you overcome it? Uh, the hardest thing was probably um, my dad having cancer. Um, again, I wasn't really a child at this point. I was When he passed away, I was a senior in high school. Mm. Um, but... Um, it was something that, that took up a large chunk of, of my time and my life at, in high school. Um, he had a lot of doctor's appointments he had to go to, and I was the only person in the house that could drive because my mom didn't drive and my brothers had all moved out. Uh, so I was taking a lot of time off from school at the time to take him to his doctor's appointments. Did your grades drop? They oh. did. Um, in fact, I almost got, uh, left behind because of the excessive absences. Mm. But it was one of those things like, all right, I'm trying to save my dad's life here, people. Cut me some slack. If I got to repeat the year, I'll repeat the year if I have to. But I can't not take him to his doctor's appointment, you know? Um, and eventually we kind of came, came to a head with the school. We, we came to a uh, uh, agreement where they were they were a little bit more lenient. Um, but how did I overcome it? I was working at the time too. So I was going to school full time. I was working 20 to 25 hours a week during the week. Okay. And I was taking my dad to his doctor's appointments and I, you know, poured myself into work when he passed away. I wound up, you know, working even more. And when I graduated high school, I had to work full time to support my mom at that point in time because she had no income. Uh, so it was really work that was the coping factor for me. So does, did work calm you down? Uh, it gave me enough of a distraction that uh, I was able to step out of those problems that I was dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so my next question is, do you consider your parents to be good or bad parents, which I added in, and... Why do you think so? Good job patting yourself on the back on this question. Just saying. Um, we'll take my dad first. Okay. And I don't think my dad is good or bad. Uh, I think he was damaged from the loss of his first marriage and the loss of his son. And that kind of made him very distant. 
Um, and I don't want to make excuses for him, but I can understand, you know, having gone through a divorce with a child involved already, I can totally understand how he was hurt by that. I mean, you also experienced that. Exactly. Um, so I don't, looking back now, like I didn't understand it when I was a kid because I didn't go through it. Having gone through something similar, I have a lot more sympathy for my dad now. Um, I think he could have did things differently. Mm-hmm. I did different things differently. So I have to thank him for at least showing me how not to be. Mm. So I don't think my, my, my dad's good or bad, really. He's great, we'll say. How about your mom? My mom, um, she was a saint. She was the best. Um, and, and there's, there's too many reasons to describe why. Um, but the biggest reason I think was that she, she never put herself before other people, whether it was my dad, my grandmother, my, you know, her children, she always put herself second and that level of sacrifice for, you know, her entire life, um, is commendable. Definitely sounds like she's amazing. Yeah. Alrighty. The next question in the the final question in this section is did you have any siblings and were you close to any of them? I did. I had three brothers. Um the only one that I was ever really close to was my oldest brother, Michael, until he passed away. Um, and I think our relationship was more a default relationship because my two middle brothers, uh, Tommy and Kenny were very close. So Mike and I just sort of you know, gravitated towards each other cause that was what was left over, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, he and I were very different people. Um, and sometimes it was an effort to get along with him. And in the end, ultimately you know, I wound up being the one that was looking after him to a certain extent. But um, I, I still miss him. Mm. Yeah, and you actually told me I actually met him. You did. You don't remember meeting him, but he was over at the house a few times. Mm-hmm. So, and he's actually the only one of your brothers I've ever seen. That's correct. Alrighty. So, that just about wraps up our family and friends part of this podcast. Okay. And we also have more questions that are about you. Okay. Ready? Yep. So the first question in this section is, as a kid, what do you think you wanted to be for a living? Oh, hands down. I wanted to be a writer. I still do. Uh, a novelist specifically. I wrote a lot of stuff, uh, amateur stuff. I used to publish stuff in school newspapers. I used to publish stuff in online publications and stuff. So I'm a writer at heart. Okay. So that definitely sounds like a good career for you. I, well, unfortunately, it's not one that I'm in, but yeah, it would. Unfortunately. So, okay. The next question is, in hindsight, is there a time where you didn't stand up for someone or something, but wished you did, and why didn't you at the time? Well, yeah, my my father was an abusive individual, verbally, not physically, and he would go off on these rants against my mother at times. And for the sake of keeping the peace for the household, my mother didn't fight back, and it used to bother me. Um, And at the time, my father terrified me, um, which is exactly, I think, what he wanted. Uh, So I didn't fight back on a lot of those occasions. And then one day when I was like 16, I'm not sure what it was. He was flying off on her because I think his dinner was cold. Well, his dinner was cold because when it was time for dinner, he was over at the neighbor's house drinking. And she came, he came home, 
and my mother served him the dinner and it wasn't piping hot like he wanted it and he flew off the handle. Well, something snapped inside of me at that point in time. Uh, and my father was a small man. He was five four, five five, maybe. Okay. Um, maybe 200 pounds soaking wet. And at 16, I was six foot four, 300 pounds. So there wasn't a physical intimidation factor anymore with my father. And I was just tired of abusing my mom like that. So I got up in his face at that point in time and I got him between him and my mom and I wasn't going to deal with it anymore. And it almost came to blows, um, but it didn't. And um, he never yelled at my mother again after that. Well, that's good. It is. But a couple of weeks later, he was diagnosed with cancer and that was probably why he didn't yell at her anymore. But mm. Anyway. Next question is, how has your idea of what it means to be a man changed over the span of your life? Um, being a man is less about image and more about substance. Okay. So that's all you really have to say on that? That's it. Okay. Next question is... What were some of your biggest insecurities when you were in high school? Uh, my weight was the number one biggest insecurity. Okay. I was always a big kid, and uh, that's usually the first thing. Anything with your appearance is usually the first thing that kids latch on to when they're going to be mean. Hmm. Doesn't sound good. No. Alrighty. So the next question is... Are you where you thought you'd be at this point in your life? Um, surprisingly, no. Um, I'm far more successful professionally than I ever deserved to be, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, and I'm exceedingly fortunate to have um, the family life that I have. I have a wonderful wife. I have wonderful children. Um, although I, I do have to admit that, uh, I thought my relationship with Sam would be a little bit different than it is today. Well, it's definitely gotten better. It has definitely gotten better, but, uh, it's far from where it should be. Unfortunately, but most of it is all good. It is. So the next question that I have is, what is the first time you remember really getting your feelings hurt and by whom and what happened? Uh, first time, still vivid in my memory. I was five years old and I was at the playground and this kid was making fun of my weight. And this was back before I had anger management uh, counseling. And we wound up getting into a fight over it. And the ultimate irony, as it turns out, he was a kid that was on the street next to mine, and he and I became best friends for the next 20 years after that. Seriously? Yeah, so it's kind of funny how things work out. Yeah, kind of funny. Next question is, who was the first person you ever said, I love you, in a romantic context, and did you say it back? The first person was Amy Siebold. She was a girl that I had met online through a, a dating service. She was going to college up in uh, Ambler at Temple. And uh, yes, she did say it back. Okay. So that answers that question. Yes. Next question is, if you could have any, if you could have a dinner party with three people, living or dead, who would it be? Uh, Stephen Hawking, Albert Einstein, and Douglas MacArthur. I think you skipped a question. Do it again. That's okay. My next question is, what was the moment you realized you wanted to marry mom? Uh, as corny as it sounds, see, we had to get this question in because it's too important. <laughs> Uh, as corny as it sounds, it was our first date. Um, I'm sure she'll claim 
something different, but I kind of knew after, after our first date at Puffer Bellies that uh, she was the right one. And I just want to say something that happened on that first date that you told me. Right. When you were there, Mommy had already gone on a bunch of dates, and she was actually crying because she didn't want this to be the final date. Exactly. So she fell for me at the same time, and she'll tell you different, I'm sure. I'm sure. My next question is, if you could if you could have a dinner party with three... No, you already asked that one. Next question. <laughs> Daddy, it's running a little long. Uh, well, think? let's go. Okay, okay. What did a typical Friday night look like for you at age 17? Uh, work. By that point, uh, I was working nights after school. Uh, we'd close at about 9. I'd be there till 9.30, and then I'd come home and relax. Okay. We can stop here. We can end the podcast if you want. We don't have to finish all the questions. We do have... Is there any ones do you want that you want to do? Uh, we have a few more to do, but we can always skip them. We do them another time. Okay, that was the final question I had in this section. And since it's our special podcast for you, I'm going to have your closing remarks and your shout-outs today. Wow, I get to do this, huh? Yep. Congratulations. Okay. I hope you got it in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to it. And now, sir, I close. I give it to you for your closing remarks and your shout-outs. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. Uh, my closing remarks, I, I really wasn't prepared for this, but uh, I hope this let you understand me a little bit more these questions mm -hmm. um, and I would encourage our listeners out there to do sort of the same thing with their parents sit down get questions together that, that you think will help you understand your parents a little bit better and, uh, and ask those questions and get those answers uh, some of these were some very good questions very revealing questions uh, and, and I had fun doing this I definitely had fun, too. Um, shout outs? Well, shout out to you. You did a fantastic job hosting. Not only did you produce, you wrote the show, you've produced it, you've run the board, you've hosted it, um, and I think you've done a fantastic job, and uh, I see a future in broadcast for you, at least for these podcasts. Yay. So thank you very much for hosting this today. And Madison. thank you for joining me. Awesome. So that about wraps up our podcast today. Thank all of the, I want to thank all the viewers for watching and we'll see everyone next week for our next podcast. Awesome. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. That's where you were last week. Just watch the door when the lines go down, they need to turn it off. Inherent talk. Hey, see, we're still here. Hey, hey. <laughs>